right now, Pittsburgh's best sports show is about to begin. Call us or tweet us. We've got things to talk about on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. All right, thanks a lot, Erica. Thank you for tuning in to the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. Rich Walsh, I'll be joined by Chris Muller in a matter of moments over at the 93.7 The Fan Cam, and we're going to be talking a lot about what happened up at Steelers training camp this week, and they wrapped up this week, uh, basically first week of practice because they started last Thursday. Still no Russell Wilson for team activities. Uh, Chris, he did some individual drills. He did some seven-on-seven. Seven. You know, it just goes back to why in the heck was he pushing sleds? Yeah, there's no good explanation for that one. That's a terrible job by whoever the new strength and conditioning guy is. Uh, it's just, it's going to loom over the season if he can't go or he's compromised at all and they go with Fields and Fields doesn't play well or something like that. But there's some small part of me that thinks Mike Tomlin is not completely despondent about this, Richie, because I think all along Mike Tomlin uh, really was tantalized by the prospect of what Justin Fields could bring, and now he gets a full week with Fields running with the ones. I think the guys that might be somewhat unhappy with this on the roster are actually the veterans, Minka Fitzpatrick, TJ Watt, I think Cam Hayward. They all vouched and pushed pretty hard for the Steelers to get Russell Wilson to come here, and so I've got to imagine they can't be thrilled that he missed the first week of practice. Yeah, uh, it was a hot one up there today, Chris. I was up there. Uh, Roman Wilson, the other Wilson, he's going to be out for what he's, he's – termed as week to week according to Tomlin today uh, they worked on this kickoff uh, for most of the latter half of the practice and look uh, after watching a little bit of tonight's game I, I don't I, I don't know if I like this uh, I just give them this give teams the ball to 25 yeah, I'm on the other side of this as you I, I actually have some hope that this is going to inject a little life into a play that has been mostly dead for years do you think this is a big reason why they got Cordero Patterson thinking that he can actually help them in this area I would say why they got Cordero Patterson is 90% this and 10% Arthur Smith is familiar with him from his time in Atlanta. But the overwhelming reason is because they wanted to get the guy that is the most kick return touchdowns in NFL history. So I, I think it's almost exclusively because of this. Yeah, we had a chance to talk to Arthur Smith today. He liked uh, that his offensive linemen were a little fiery today. Second day, second fight. Um, you know, seems to be the norm up there. But, you know, they brush it off and they get back at it. I don't think there's any hard feelings after these fights up there. It's just part of football, I guess. And, uh, you know, one thing you talked a little bit about today, which I found interesting, uh, you know, he, they like to use the, you know, the 12 personnel, get heavy and uh, use a lot of those tight ends. But he said he doesn't want to be predictable, um, you know, when, when he was asked a question about the tight ends. What do you make of that? I mean, you would think that that offense is almost predictable, though. Uh, he might not want to be predictable, but he is largely, I think, going to base the offense about, you know, around what he knows, is comfortable with, and has had success with, which is run the ball uh, kind of in heavy sets and run it right at teams. He doesn't have a Derrick Henry, but he has a, a decent facsimile of a very good running back between the two that they have in the backfield. I think he wants to get his quarterbacks out on the edge, whoever it is, Wilson or Fields. Uh, I think he wants them on the move, throwing on the move. I think Pat Fryermuth is somebody he wants to line up in various places. The head coach who wants this to happen, when it happens, has to pretend like he's mad that it happened. Very amusing part of camp every year. You know, I can tell you something. You know, being around the team the first week of camp up there, um, obviously there's going to be some excitement, but it seems pretty genuine. It seems like, you know, inside that team there's a, there's a, a sense of, you know, uh, in, in, I, 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 the only other word I can think of right now is just excitement and enthusiasm. Uh, and I think, you know, my guess would be they won't come out and say it, but obviously they have a real offensive coordinator in here um, and, and they feel like they can do more damage on offense this year. Well, you didn't want to say the other part, but they might have two real quarterbacks in there. Um, Kenny Pickett, I think those guys generally liked him as a person. But you watch him consistently unable last year, he and Mitch Trubisky, you watch them both unable to move the team with any consistency, any real effectiveness, any explosiveness. It's going to wear on a lot of these guys, especially veterans like Hayward who are near the end of their careers and want to have one shot at a ring. Uh, so I think seeing a guy who's won one in Wilson and a guy in Fields who at least brings electric athletic ability probably rejuvenates them. I don't think they disliked Kenny the person, but they were probably frustrated by the end of the year 
by Kenny the player. Yeah, no question about that. All right, we'll continue the Steelers talk after the break. Also, I want to talk about the Battle and Buccos who had the day off, but there's some genuine excitement around that team as well. Back in a couple minutes. Stay right there. All right, welcome back to the Ireland Contracted Nightly Sports Call. This is our GMC Tweet of the Night, and this is from your partner, Chris, Andrew Filipponi. Uh, O'Neill Cruz has 20 errors. Minus eight defensive runs saved at shortstop. Worst at his position. He's an incredible talent, but he's too big for that position. And he lapses, tries to do too much. Make him an outfielder next year or move him to third base and get rid of Hayes. Um, you know, I, I've always, I, I've been on this, uh, you know, do something else with O'Neill Cruz for a while now. I don't think he should be a shortstop. I don't think you need to, you can't really move him this year. Uh, but I remember covering spring training probably 18 19 somewhere around there where they potentially wanted to try to move him out to right field but he didn't want it um so i i don't know what you do that's like a very difficult play he made it look easy so the talent's there and that's why it frustrates people but i could conceivably see putting him at third base and having hayes play shortstop next year not get rid of hayes but just tell hayes hey you're a shortstop uh if he's so good at third base he should at the very least be an above average shortstop uh I don't think, though, unless O'Neill Cruz these last 50-plus games of the season looks like Andrelton Simmons from several years ago or like Omar Vizquel in his prime at short, I don't really think you can justify keeping him. I know he wants to stay there, but performance is performance, and he's got the most errors in the league. That is just not a, you know, a guy saying, oh, this is what I want to be. That's not a good enough reason to keep him there. Yeah, look, he's a great athlete, uh, has a great arm. Uh, put him in right field. I mean, if you if you can't switch him from to third base, if if Hayes doesn't feel comfortable at short, which I would think he would, um, I think that's an easy transition for a third baseman and shortstop to switch flip flop right there. But I would make him a right fielder. I mean, you've got De La Cruz now for a couple of years uh, as your right fielder. I mean, Cruz, I think there's a lot of thought that you wouldn't want to waste the arm, so put him in right field. He'd still have to learn the position. I mean, he is really athletic. You just make sure that he can handle it. It's a much easier field, position then? than shortstop. They need stop. a center fielder. I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. If he, if he willingly goes to the outfield, if he's willing to acknowledge that the experiment did not work and that he cannot keep making that many errors and he shows basic uh, – he, he's adroit at moving around in the outfield and he has better spatial awareness, I'd absolutely consider him in center field. Aaron Judge is no great center fielder, but he plays it for the Yankees and he's 6'7", and he's a bigger, bulkier guy. Uh, than O'Neal Cruz. I'd give him a shot there. Like, for me, it's this. You move him off short. You at least think about third base. Then you go right field. You try the outfield. If that doesn't work, you, I guess, pretty much have to put him at first base, even though that wastes the arm. And then last chance saloon is just you go DH. But they've got to try every – they've got to exhaust every option with him when it comes to playing him at a spot in the field. It just looks like it's not going to be shortstop, nor should it be. Yeah, I mean, he's a great athlete. And the more th I think about it, I think center maybe. Because uh, the, Steel uh, the Steelers, I've been at Steelers too much. The Pirates need a center fielder. That's the position that they need. Uh, so, have an, you know, experiment with him out there. Let's go out to Rick in Hemfield. How you doing, Rick? Good. I'm doing great, Rich. Hey, all these things that we're talking about with Cruz, we said about uh, Pedro Alvarez and Starling Marte and Gregory Polanco. The Pirates either just don't develop these guys or they don't develop them on the mental side of the game. As far as I'm concerned, get this guy off the field. Make him a DH or get rid of him. Uh, thanks a lot, Rick. He's too much of a Marte, talent. Marte, hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Marte won two gold gloves back-to-back. -back. The idea that had has kind of permeated through town that Starling Marte, because he was prone to the occasional laps on the bases or once in a while might make a, a – an odd or, or head out of the game play in the outfield. This idea that that made him a bad fielder is a complete, you know, it's a farce, frankly. The guy won two gold gloves. The big disservice they did to Marte was not making him the center fielder day one of his MLB career because with all due respect to Andrew McCutcheon, Marte was the best center fielder on the roster, but McCutcheon wanted to stay there, so they decided to defer to him. Much like Jeter, def uh, Rodriguez deferring to Jeter, when he got to the Yankees, Jeter should have moved over to third. Rodriguez should have played short, but they def uh, he's the captain. He's Derek Jeter, whatever. Uh, Polanco is a different case. Guy was gangly, couldn't figure it out. Pa this is the Pedro thing, though. I will say this from what Rick said: the Pedro situation is what worries me most. Here's why: 
I think Pedro let the throwing woes get into his head big time, and he was a smart, cerebral guy. I know Cruz cares a lot and wants to be a part of a winner, like a big part of a winner. You just hope that these errors don't get into his head and start ruining him overall the way that they did Alvarez, because that's exactly what happened to Pedro. It's like missing a short putt, then you miss the next one, and then you keep missing them. Uh, you know what I'm doing, Richie. I don't even look at the. I don't even look at the ball now. I look at the hole, and then I've been. I've been making them. I've been making right. them. Nice. All right, let's go out to uh, Anthony in Verona. How you doing, Anthony? Okay, that's good. I don't know what Anthony's playing, but uh, you know that could be our theme music here. Let's go out to Aaron uh, in Washington. How you doing, Aaron? Hey, gentlemen. How you doing this evening, guys? Good. Thanks for calling. Okay. Well. Before I, I've been hearing you talk, you know, waiting online, and I was talking about Steelers, but you know what? I was you start talking about the Pirates now. Yeah, O'Neill Cruz has definitely played out of position. He is not a shortstop. He is not a third baseman. He is an outfielder. Okay. I mean, because his his glove is what hurts him. I mean, but like even when he hits the you know hits the ball, he swings and misses at so many pitches. It's obvious, and he's you know I mean. He needs some seasoning still, you know, as far as that goes. So we can put him in his the field. Yeah. But, but his fielding his fielding affects his hitting. Like, I really don't – Valdez is a really good lefty yesterday. He makes a lot of lefty hitters look bad. Yeah. I really believe that O'Neill Cruz, when he's fielding the ball well, and see, then it translates over to the plate. He's calm. He's relaxed. When he's going well at the plate, he spits on pitches off the plate out and away and low. He doesn't even look, he doesn't even sniff at him, and then you throw him one mistake and he hammers it. But when the fielding bleeds into what he's trying to do at the plate, that's when things get really bad for him and for the Pirates. Well, obviously, in order to be a center fielder, you have to be a good communicator. And what he did yesterday showed me that he's not. Uh, so maybe center field isn't the position for him. Uh, but I, I definitely think it's somewhere in the outfield. Even if you move Brian Reynolds over to center, you move him to left, uh, I definitely think that his you know, his future with the Pirates or in Major League Baseball is out in the outfield, not at short or third. Uh, first, I, I agree with you. It's a waste to put him at first. Let's go out to David in Finleyville. How are you doing, David? Thanks for taking my call. I got a question for Chris and yourself. Do you see the Steelers winning the division with the roster they have right now? And uh, You know what? The, the roster they have right now, they're going to have to add a few pieces, and I would imagine, Chris, in maybe a week or two weeks or three weeks, that maybe a wide receiver would become available. Uh, you know, someone that just can't make a team, gets cut, uh, maybe for salary or whatever, uh, that that might have an opportunity here in Pittsburgh. I think that's how they... How uh, about John Mechie from Houston, who might be like the fifth man in a, in a very deep, talented receiving core, a guy that had really first-round pedigree before a knee injury, then he had to beat cancer, which obviously was a very inspirational story, but... That guy still got picked in the second round before he then got leukemia when he was with the uh, Texans. He might be their fourth or fifth guy, Richie, and that might make him like the second guy if the Steelers wanted to get him in a trade. Uh, to uh, caller's question there, though, I look at this as being the Ravens or the Bengals division. I still think the Ravens are probably the best of the bunch. I think a healthy Joe Burrow makes the Bengals very tough. My initial outlook right now is that the Steelers have a much better roster at very specific places, O-line, uh, to be one, to name one, than they've had in, in several years, Richie. But they could easily be a 10-7 and 7 team that finishes third in the division and is in a dogfight for the playoffs. Yeah, I, I think they have a chance to win a division, but I also think that they can finish fourth in this division. So it's going to be really tight, really close. Uh, they get off, they got to get off to a good start. All right, got to take a break. Back in a couple minutes. All right, welcome back. Now it's time to bring in Josh Taylor to find out what's coming up on KDK News at 11. Josh. Richie, tonight a teenager jailed over the fatal stabbing of his friend, plus a legal battle brews over the ashes of a former Steelers quarterback and how many poll workers Allegheny County needs before the November election, all coming up at 11. See you then. All right, thanks a lot, Josh. Not a lot of time left here, Chris. Uh, uh, but what do you think the Pirates need to do here for these next six games? They have to win four of the six, I think, to kind of stay in it because they're, they're falling back a little bit now, two and a half games back in the wild card. 
Eight and four in the next 12. Arizona and then San Diego bookending one series with the Dodgers, two Padres series. Go eight and four these next 12, and you will be well within the thick of the playoff chase. All right, I hope you're right. Thanks a lot, Chris. I appreciate the time. See you next week. Hopefully we see you guys over on KDK News right now.